Hi, everyone. My name is Jasmine Daly, and I'm here with Benny Altman presenting on the CRAN Cookbook Project. We've been actively working on this project since the beginning of this summer, um, and we'll finish up with writing um, this November or December. We're really excited to share our process, uh, some learnings and snippets from the results of a community-wide survey that was run, and of course, an invitation to contribute to the project. So this is us, the team. Uh, Benny and I are writers, um, and we have uh, the great pleasure of having um, a wonderful steering committee um, comprised of Heather, Gwen, and Bettina, um, who really provide a lot of support and encouragement and uh, a nice forum to bounce ideas off of. A little bit of the project um, and the background. Uh, the CRAN team often sees the same issues cropping up in packages, um, submissions, and resubmissions. Uh, the solution is often documented in the guidance for writing our extensions or the CRAN repository policy, um, but often those are overlooked and sometimes really hard to understand, especially for uh, new package developers. Um, and Often uh, with folks experiencing a lot of issues, um, this could lead to a really long timeline um, for folks to get their open source contributions published on CRAN um, and really involves a lot of back and forth um, emailing and feedback between uh, the CRAN volunteers and package maintainers. And unfortunately, if folks miss any types of deadlines, it could lead to packages getting archived um, and really sometimes creates a barrier uh, for new package developers and even existing package developers. Uh, a few of the goals that we had um, were to really to focus on educating um, new uh, and um, new package developers and uh, new folks to the R community uh, and really help fully um, empower them and to create um, and build their own technical knowledge up to help participate in this entire process. Um, another goal we had was to create uh, a user-friendly uh, new set of documentation as a complement to the existing uh, documentation for writing our extensions and the CRAN repository policy, um, and to really have it be digestible and working off of a modern publishing system to really meet the expectations that a lot of folks currently have um, when learning uh, R and the different resources and extensions for it. Uh, this project was really essential um, um, for this goal, is to help identify some of the common CRAN submission issues and to create a framework of problems and solutions uh, that are hopefully really easy to implement, implement and discover. So uh, the real points uh, that we wanted to hit in developing uh, the CRAN cookbook is to really um, identify those common issues Sim helping to hopefully simplify the submission process, um, really encouraging new developers to help self um, support them into solving their problems faster and to really build confidence for folks to contribute to their open source uh, community. And that's where my expertise as a CRAN team member comes in because uh, I've been working on the CRAN team for about two, two years now. Um, I think we just start if we um, go over the CRAN workflow and what happens to a package when submitted to CRAN. So the first step is the submission via the web form. Um, some of you might have done it already, and then you get a confirmation email um, that you submit, the, the submission was received, and the package lands in the pre-test folder on the CRAN server, um, where all automatic checks and tests are conducted. And then depending on the results, um, they are either moved to the archive folder, which is essentially just a place where all rejected packages wait until they are deleted, um, or the newbie folder um, where manual inspections happen. Um, so when a package uh, is a newbie folder, it waits for it to go either again to the archive where the rejected package is based, or it gets published um, and is on the way and takes a few more hours probably to actually be on the server, but it's on the server. Um, and the other folders, um, which also exist, are mostly for resubmissions and therefore not that important for the cookbook. That's why I'm not going into that much detail. So how do we come up with the issues and the recipes, as we like to call them? Um, 
as I told you, uh, every new submission is married um, after it passes all the automatic tests. Um, and I and my colleagues, we see the same issues mostly um, for the newbies. There are just a handful of issues which, yeah, are for are visible in all newbies. Um, for example, uh, the example wrappers. So how examples are wrapped in in the documentation. Um, and we decided on the recipes based on um, essentially just the feeling of me and my colleagues and which issues are very common. Um, but we also added more to the list um, if we realized that they are important. Um, the only problem with this approach is that the amount of recipes on automatic tests is fairly small because the packages don't really make it to the newbies folder and therefore are not really in our workflow. Um, but we already started to implement a few of those um, issues already. Um, and that's where we heavily rely on the community and contributions from other people and other folk out there. So I'm giving you a short overview on the style guide where we have for each recipe. So we each of our recipes has a title, which is a very short sentence on what the recipe is about. Um, then a good section where we give a short paragraph, one or two sentences maybe only, um, stating what the problem is and yeah, how we can, yeah, what the problem is essentially. Uh, and then the solution part gives a very short overview and a very concise overview on how to solve this um, problem. So if folks just want a easy solution, it's probably enough to just read the solution. Um, and then after the solution, we have a more detail on why this problem exists in the first place, um, how to solve it, and give some examples. Um, we try to write the, each recipe as simply, simple and concise as possible to make it even understandable for our beginners. Um, we used a lot of uh, call-out boxes, notes, and warnings to provide helpful tips and context. Um, and we actually included the actual uh, email template from Cran Reviews or error notes um, for automatic tests um, in text boxes like you can see below. So it's the actual comment you receive per mail from Brian. Um, and here is a short um, recipe we're going to show you. It's the setting a specific seed, one of our recipes that's already in the cookbook. As you can see the structure, we have the title and then the problem with just one sentence stating what the problem is. The solution, also again, just one setting sentence, how to solve it, and then a bit more details um, where you have a example code and a call out note at the bottom. Um, you notice that there is not yet a crank comment implemented for this, um, but we are working on that at the moment. So probably when you're seeing this, it's already there. Um, as you can see on the left, we structured the cookbook into different um, yeah, issue chapters, essentially. Um, depending on where the issue arises. So there is a general issue section, manuals and documentation, code issue and description issue. Um, but yeah, it's just to make it a bit more, yeah, nice looking. Next up, we're gonna review a little bit of the community survey results, um, which I have to admit, we were really initially um, hesitant to run a community-wide survey. Uh, we did not want it to turn into a forum where folks would continue their chatter from social media, just complaining and airing out their grievances, which is important and valuable, but we really wanted to uh, set this survey up to act as a baseline so we can understand the community's own understanding interpretation of the existing um, documentation and where there would be a possible um, an area of opportunity for the CRAN cookbook. Uh, the survey was hosted on Google Forms. Uh, we had about 126 responses. Um, we shared it on various social media platforms so that a lot of folks uh, would see and have the opportunity to um, um, participate. Um, and we had a number of folks also provide their contact information, which we have retained, uh, so that they could be notified on how they can contribute. Um, and, and further improve and add on to the CRAN cookbook. Uh, so some really interesting insights I'll go over. Um, we had a survey question about how folks would rate their experiences with CRAN. 
uh, on a scale of one to five. Uh, we saw a really mixed um, set of responses. Uh, some folks are having a poor experience um, as indicated, and some folks are having an excellent experience um, and provided a lot of praise and um, feedback that Grand has just become this uh, absolute gold standard way of sharing and disseminating folks' open source contributions. And that's really awesome and excellent to hear. Um, we did hear back um, from uh, some some of the responders about which parts of the CRAN process could have better documentation. Um, and those were um, centered around um, better guidelines around reproducible testing environments, handling notices and responses, uh, more comprehensive coverage of CRAN checks, both automatic and those that are manual, um, a template for a package setup. Um, there's a lot of different uh, style and um, uh, setup guides and having that written down and documented would be really helpful uh, as folks indicated. And then handling packages with online resources and how to um, help provide additional context and um, outside resources to research papers or additional links to help uh, really um, enhance and package. Uh, one really interesting insight uh, that we gleaned from this survey, uh, a lot of folks have uh, awareness and have read the existing documentation, writing our extensions and CRAN policies. Um, but uh, what was really interesting is that even after reading the existing documentation, many folks had a very difficult time um, still submitting their R package and responding back and trying to solve their own um, problems that they were experiencing in the submission process. So I thought this was a really great uh, visual and insight that we gained that really helps to underscore the importance of developing user-friendly and digestible technical documentation. Um, and really that's where uh, the CRAN cookbook sits as a complement to the existing documentation. So um, we really uh, encourage community contributions. Uh, we have a bit of a pathway mapped out for folks to contribute. Um, that includes starting out with a discussion topic um, on our GitHub repo, um, and then going through the process of making a PR and interacting with both uh, Benny and I as writers and then with other community members uh, to really get a sense of what the recipe you would like to include uh, would be. Um, then after all of the PR process, uh, your new uh, recipe is going to be rendered in the cookbook um, automatically via GitHub Actions. Um, and we really look forward to seeing everyone's contributions. Thank you once again um, to the R Consortium um, for the funding and support of this project. Uh, we really valued our, our feedback and collaboration with the working group um, for the R packages. Um, giving us constant feedback on the progress of the project, uh, the survey and the design of it, um, and just really being a, uh, a wonderful support mechanism for um, developing uh, open source technical documentation and software. So thank you again, to our consortium. We are ready for questions. Thank you. Thanks.